Tells them what? Do what you want. Do what you feel. Right. That's all we do is we do what we feel. We do what our feelings tell us to do. And sometimes, you know, we second guess ourselves. And the other day I, I found a really good like test on myself because I'm still trying to listen to my feelings. I mean, it's still um, a lesson. Like I'm not fully evolved as they say, you know, to where I'm like, Oh, I just always do, but I've gotten way better. Um, we've been doing that for many years now where if we think we should do something for the most part, we do it. Cause no idea is a bad idea. People get this misconception that, um, an idea is bad. No, no idea is bad. Some ideas you don't necessarily need to do, if that makes sense, like at that moment. Like it was like it pops in your head and maybe it's not for that moment. But most things, if it's something that you can do in that moment, you should do. Like, But we go like, oh, I don't want to. Or, oh, I don't know. We're scared for most things. But, um, And then we think of all the things that could have happened and we go, I'm so glad I didn't do that. But you don't know what could have happened the other way. We always think of the negatives. Like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't do this because this and this and this. But you don't know. So, you know, so we always want to often choose the easiest, most common thing, the thing that we're used to. But it's not usually the what's going to make you the happiest in life. So that's what Satanism is, those new feelings. But the other day, I was doing laundry. And I got this feeling. I, I was picking the dryers. We have tons of dryers here. But half the time, some of them don't work. So I got this feeling that this dryer didn't work. And I don't, I didn't know why I was just like, I had no reason. I just thought it didn't work and stupid me. I'm like, nah, that's that I'm going to try. So I put in, and we only had, um, I have a laundry card in order to add more to your laundry card. You have to put $5 more. You can't put like a dollar 50 with the, um, or like a quarter if you're short, like I was short a quarter for another load and I needed to add $5 and I didn't have a $5 bill to add um, that day. Well, I, I had ones and the machine doesn't take ones. It's like a laundry card where you can, it only takes fives. Anyway, so I was like one quarter short to do another load so I could only do one load. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna choose that dryer anyways because I don't know why I thought it didn't work. And the darn dryer did not dry at all. I mean, the clothes were more wet when I went back than after an hour. I waited an hour, too, because you don't know. Ah, it gets dry. I'd come back, and the clothes were more wet than when I put them in because they'd been, like, soaking there together, all soppy together. I was like, oh, this is so retarded. And I knew the dryer didn't work. Like, I just didn't listen to my own feelings. And we do that all the time. We're like, oh, why? Because we don't think that we could know it. You know what I mean? Like, I go, why would I know that that dryer doesn't work? I don't, you know, I've never used it before. No one said it didn't work. I just thought it didn't work. So we often don't trust ourselves. But it's not you that's coming up with that. It's your dead friends. It's um, the universe. A knowledge is a collective. And a lot of it comes from the dead. And that's why people, um, you know, need to realize that dying is not the end. And so right now, if you're worried about dying because of this coronavirus, um, remember that's not the end. And I say this because I lost a mother and a brother. My mom committed suicide when I was 20, and my brother died in a motorcycle accident when I was 22, so two years later. And it was devastating. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was... I am just starting to kind of like get back to myself again because I was so out of whack for so many years after my mom dying. And, um, but I had no idea that she was still around. Like I thought she was just gone forever, but now I feel her presence. And you should, if you've ever lost a loved one, you should feel their presence. And we think that it's just in our head or we think it's just a memory, but no, they're still around. And especially if it was someone that cared about you a lot, then they're probably around a lot, you know. Like, my mom is always around. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I am still dealing with... Um, I was bulimic for 15 years, and I created so much um, crap in my chest and lungs and throat that I am still dealing with that on a daily basis of trying to get all that out. So right. sometimes I sound sick, but I'm not. It's a recovery thing. Right. And so one of the things, too, is that like you mentioned that, well, there are supernatural forces at play. And what you're describing is that this whole situation might be like a supernatural thing, maybe. Like, oh, yeah. Like so a the, thing. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. because, 
a couple things. One, the virus only seems to be affecting, risking those people who didn't listen to you. Those people who drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. These are the mm -hmm. ones with respiratory, mm -hmm. okay? The ones who are smokers, smoking, mm -hmm. alcohol, smoking cigarettes, and the ones who are obese. Mm -hmm. And Boris Johnson, you know, the prime minister of Brexit over in England, he just went into ICU yesterday. Just so you know. Is he? Um, he's 55 years old, um, fat as hell, and I'm pretty sure he's a... If you look at his healthy photos, I thought were his sick ones. Because he has bags under his eyes. That's what's going on is it's the people that are unhealthy. And see, a lot of people are unhealthy right now. And I've been talking about this for many years now because um, I struggled with uh, diet my whole life. I, I had eating disorders like crazy. So I never really was overweight, but I ate as if someone who was overweight, overweight because uh, bulimics eat copious amounts of foods. So I understand the addiction to food and the addiction to sugar and that it's not in your control. It's not that you choose to just eat the whole bag of chips or the whole box of cookies. What happens is once you start eating those, sugar takes over. And um, it turns off the sensor in your brain to know that you're full. And so you just, you don't ever feel full, so you keep eating. <laughs> so it's not a self-control thing. It's actually the food that you're choosing that is messing with your brain. And sugar does that and, and a lot of these things um uh, uh the glutens the dairies the uh, gmos all of these um cause the what happens is it confuses your brain a lot of these things like the artificial things so your brain will t treat artificial things as sugar so it'll still go through the processes but it's even worse because it didn't necessarily get the sugar that it thought it got like for example if that doesn't make sense what i'm saying let's use an artificial sweetener for an example like a splenda or even stevia people think stevia is so good but it's still the problem with it is your brain thinks it got sh sugar because it's so sweet. So it then starts to go through the process as if you receive sugar. And what the process is when you receive sugar is your body produces insulin. Well, what happens when your body produces insulin is then it tells your body to store fat and to be dormant and go into like a hibernation mode. So every time you're doing these artificial things or real sugar in excess, which in excess is over like 30 grams a day and 30 grams a day is probably way less than most of you're consuming i mean that's like three tablespoons three teaspoons yeah but i mean it, it that doesn't even people don't understand because they think oh i don't eat well, you know what? It, yeah 30 point, grams is, is like we're not, we're not, uh, that wasn't the point to talk about that. okay but anyways no one cares about that okay what they care about is how to stay safe from this virus and what what i what they're saying is i mean the guys who are freaking out is are the people that are fat the, oh, right, well, yes, that's word. what you're saying. And so, right, so, well, I know, so, that, so that's why I was talking about I know, diet. So, we're trying to like... so what I'm saying is the people's food choices right now is what's going on. Is, okay. It affects your... Yeah. Is what's been going on is for a long time, I've been saying that the food is out of whack. What happened is they started messing with our food in the 80s. And they started adding all, of the, like the genetically modifying everything, adding sugar to everything. They thought that fat was bad, so they started adding sugar instead. They made everything low fat and high sugar. And um, now we have more obesity than ever, and then the gluten and dairy. Dairy is not good. And caffeine is one of the big things in alcohol. So all of these things now are contributing to people's health problems. That's why we have people that are more overweight than ever. Now, when this virus comes about, it's a, getting the people that are unhealthy, which is a huge portion of the world. That's why people are worried. If you're healthy, you shouldn't even feel worried about this. I'm not worried. If I get the flu, I will definitely survive. Um, and that's how you should feel about this coronavirus. If you can survive the flu, you can survive the coronavirus. If you can't survive the flu, then you probably will die from the coronavirus. It's as simple as that. It's like, does the flu normally kill you when you get the flu? That's the question to ask yourself. Does the flu kill you when you've had the flu? <laughs> if, well, if you've had the flu, then you live through it. So it didn't kill you. But that is the people that are affected. So if it's an older person with health problems or even a younger person, if they have immune deficiency or something just very, very unhealthy about them, then they might not live. 
But everyone else, if they were to get the normal flu, that is how you could, should compare this coronavirus. So they are blowing this so <clears throat> out of proportion. And we just heard some new numbers of, what did you tell me it was worldwide? How many deaths scary. worldwide? Uh, oh, 70,000. 70,000 deaths worldwide. But do you guys know that, what was it, 600? 50. 650,000 normally worldwide for the flu every year. 650,000. We're only at 70,000 and we've shut down the whole world. And people say, oh, that's because we shut down the world is why it hasn't spread. Are you kidding me? The way that we've shut down the world has not stopped the spread. Because we have like said, don't go to work, but then cram into grocery stores. <laughs> and, and we have the same cashiers that are seeing every person. So if one of those people during the day go to the grocery store and have the virus and that cashier interact with them and then interact with everyone every one of you or anyone in the store right. same thing or if the, anyone with the virus went into the store and contaminated the store i mean so it spreads if it's that much of a, a threat it's gonna spread you guys and also some people are still working we have because essential business still has to work so if it was really that much of a threat that they're saying to where everyone could just drop dead like they're acting like then they would literally shut down everything. We wouldn't be able to leave our house. They would deliver us food from the government and they would come in like sterilized outfits to deliver it. And it'd be like in the movies if it was to the level they're saying to where we should be shutting down everything. And that's not. And so this is a farce. Now, I'm not saying the virus is a farce. There is a virus. There is a flu virus going around. Get that in your head. Yes, there is a flu virus. It is not even as severe in some cases as the flu, but a regular one. Like some people are saying, hey, it wasn't even as bad. People that actually had it. I've talked to people that they knew someone in their family that actually had it and recovered. And they were like, hey, it was just a little bit longer in duration, but not as severe as other flus that they've had. Now, the reason why people are scared is um, this one attacks your respiratory a lot. So people with respiratory problems are worried. So a lot of smokers, uh, drinkers, and old people, and, old people, well, even like, and people like overweight. Morris, he's like overweight. My overweight. Because overweight. What happens when you're overweight? Okay. Everyone wants to say don't call people fat and that fat's beautiful and all that. Great. You can be very attractive when you're overweight. I'm not saying you can't be attractive. But here is the bottom line. Being overweight is hard on your organs. So when there's some kind of thing like a respiratory thing, you are already have so much pressure on your organs when you're overweight because the fat and the thing is just put pressure. I mean, that's why it's harder to, to exercise when you're overweight. So when you're overweight, it does become a factor when it's a respiratory thing. And that's why more people are worried. But still, I mean, if you're healthy enough to get over the flu, you're going to be healthy enough to get over the coronavirus. Um, now, if you think the flu could kill you, then yeah, you better stay inside because... <laughs> you're probably going to die from the coronavirus. And it's as simple as that. And the level that we've taken this to is just so out of whack. And uh, now we're day 21 here in Vegas, and we're not opening until May 1st as of now, unless Governor Sislik decides to get a wild hair up his ass and do some more days to us. You know, at this point, I think no one cares because it's so ruined that you're just kind of like, whatever, Governor. I mean, it, I, you know, it don't matter if we open now or next year, Vegas is destroyed as we know it now. You know, I mean, it's it's done. They're even um, talking about, you know, they're probably going to open like one casino per company at a, at a time. And one company is going to start before another one, too. And they're probably going to follow suit, like watch one try to struggle to open. And then, you know, the other ones as, as business comes back. But it's going to be so tough. So it's like <laughs> at this point, it honestly doesn't even matter when because he's destroyed absolutely destroyed Vegas. I mean, it is, it is, it's destroyed. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, it'll become something different, you know, but what people knew of Vegas 
is done. And Governor Sislek can take all of the credit because he had no reason to shut down all this trip. Now you guys say, oh, this coronavirus. He allowed construction to continue here in Vegas. So that means he did not take the virus seriously because he allowed the Raider Stadium to continue even after a worker tested positive. So he doesn't care about the virus. This is all for something else, some kind of political thing. I think it's to try to uh, destroy Trump's presidency because I think Trump was going to win in 2020. Uh, this year and um, so they were worried and now they're hoping with a destroyed economy that maybe he won't win but since the Democrats are the ones that are destroying it like the Democratic um, governors are the ones that are shutting down more stuff than any other states um, so that's why I think it's a, an attack on Trump. And like I said, I've said before, I'm not political, so I don't care. I'm not voting. I don't vote. I've never voted in my life. I'm just show, saying what I think it, I, I've observed. Um, so I don't don't try to pinpoint me on one side or the other. I think they're all a bunch of fucking losers that have destroyed the government. Um and now there was a time that we had some good politicians back, you know, probably hundreds of years ago. But in the last hundred years, they've all been greedy and they all work for the same uh, group. You know what I mean? Like we act like there's a difference between Trump or Clinton, their they're friends. Um, so beyond that, I, I don't care. But what I'm saying is I believe the Democrats are trying to sabotage Trump's presidency because uh, they wanted him to be uh, impeached. That didn't work out. Uh, and if that other uh, judge dies, Trump will have a lot of power. And she is someone that would die from this virus. <laughs> because I'm not trying to laugh, but th there's people that get so old that you wonder why you're continuing living. Like, I don't want to be that old. Let me go. My mom died at 46. My brother at 26. Jared's dad. How old was your dad? Uh, 67. 67. My grandpa was 64. Those are... <laughs> fine for me. I am not trying to live to be 80 or 90. I really am not. Um, and this idea that we're stopping the whole world for the 90-year-old senior citizens. So, my goodness, so I have a story for you guys from yesterday. Javrich hasn't even heard this one. So, I, I've been taking the RTC bus, the public uh, bus here, and they made it free now because they don't want you to contaminate the bus driver. So, you have to enter through the back of the bus. Um, which I'm like, cool that it's free, but see, all of these things, as great as it is that it's free right now since none of us have money, but see, all these things, it's not good for the, for the company overall when it's free, you know what I mean? So, it's, everything is, it's just gonna have this ripple effect, domino, just <laughs> avalanche coming after we start to kind of, like, what about try to start things. What great hotspots that held businesses as usual, well, I don't even know what you're talking about there. Okay, but, oh, wait, but I was going to tell my... Here's a good thing. What can I say? I was going to tell the funny story, though. Okay, but I want you to jump on this one, too, because someone mentioned people smoke weed to, to live to 100. This is a respiratory virus. I wonder how many... They're doing everything, taking hydrochloric acid... All yeah, things, weed, too. you but can... they're not suggesting to smoke weed. See, okay, people have Why this misconception that weed? smoking is bad for you. It's not the smoking, story. it's what... No, well, I'll tell you. It's what you're smoking. So smoking weed is not bad for you, even if it makes you cough and all that. That people have this misconception. No, that's really good, and especially for me, that's been clearing out because I'm telling you, I had so much phlegm and buildup and stuff from the years of of damage I did from being bulimic. Because when you're bulimic, you throw up all your food, and that just destroys like your throat. That's why I have a hoarse voice from being bulimic all those years, and um. So smoking of weed is extremely good, even if you have a respiratory thing. Now, it seems like the worst thing to do. And a doctor will say, oh, do not, because they still think weed is bad. But no, getting that in your lungs and in your respiratory and healing it could be the best thing for you. But of course, they won't recommend weed. They'll it's very say, funny because cause everyone's freaking out uh, at the, at the, what, at the, I mean, man, they will shut down the goddamn global economy. But not one person from the government, from the federal government, or even the state government, has said, hey, make sure you smoke weed, because that might help. Right, and instead they'll say, don't smoke anything, because they, okay, people relate cigarettes to, and 
<clears throat> to weed. For one thing, the problem with smoking of cigarettes is all of the additives and all this stuff. Like, if you were to, you know, if they didn't have, if they just had all the natural stuff, it wouldn't be as bad. It's all it's the additives. All the water and everything. Yeah, but see, so with weed, all you have is the flour and the water and you don't have any of the additives. So that's where you get the bad stuff that people think of smoking. And they have this confusion that literally smoking because they think, oh, if you cough or this or that. No, if you cough, that's because you have crap in your lungs that's trying to get out that the weed is now helping you get out. Um, and that's opening up your capillaries in your lungs when you cough from weed. They so said, that's a really good thing. Someone said, who, I don't know who they said, but someone said CBD helps and we know this. Oh yeah, CBDs are the healing part of weed. CBDs heal everything. So they should definitely be taking it. Anyone with the coronavirus should be taking CBDs if they don't want to smoke. CBDs are the it's, healing it's, part. It's you can uh, you can have, they extract it's just those so it has no stony part of weed. Um, and they give that to children and everything. So it's that they should be. And it's becoming legal in most states, CBDs. It actually dilates your bronchioles. So it yeah. opens up your... CBDs are amazing. We used to take just the straight CBDs, but now we... You get CBDs if you Which smoke weed. What? It's part of weed. But if you don't want to smoke weed or consume it another way, you can extract just the CBDs. They, they not You don't do it personally. They have it at the store for you. So you can buy like droplets yeah. and stuff of just the CBDs, which it has no stony effect. You don't get high. It's just the healing part. So all you feel is you feel like as if you had took like a really good medicine where you're like, oh, that feels very uplifting. Which, oh, someone's asking... You know, which CBD is the best? You know, everyone's kind of wants to know which one's the best. Like which brand? No, I think they're referring to the which CBD, like which actual, which cannabinoid. No, the, the, the cannabinoids. Explain, explain how it works a little bit, the cannabinoids. Well, I guess um, my point. They, they have this idea like, oh, do I want vitamin C or do I want vitamin A? Or do I no, no, no. CBDs, it's just the CBDs. Okay, there's three parts of weed. There's CBD, which is the cannabinoid. That's the healing part. Like... But all of weed is healing, but that's, like, where you get most of, like, where if you need it for medicine, it comes from the CBDs. And then you have the THC, which that's the stony part. But THC is also a healing part, and it's a, they're all oils. It's all essential oils. And then the other is the terpenes, which is also an essential oil. So your terpenes are where you're going to see your variations of the different things if you're wondering where you can get your, um, you know, you have your myrcene. Your uh, limonene, your uh, your pinings, you know, these are your different um, aromas that you got. You have citrus, um, like your earthy, your pines, um, and mint, and what's the other one? Lavender. Those and all variations. There's about two hundred something terpenes. So when you're looking for a weed, if you're looking, you want to account for all three of those things. You want it to have good CBD, THC, and good terpenes. So once you learn weed, you'll figure out which ones you like. We really like the L's, like the uh, linalol and uh, limonene, and there's a bunch of them. Um, those are very uplifting. And then mercine is really good for um, to rest in your indicas. And they have mercine in sativas too, but it's they put mercine in sativa to calm down your sativa. If you have a sativa that's really like, then the mercine will bring it down a little bit because some of the sativas can create a lot of anxiety for people. Right. Um, but anyways, um, but if you're wondering for CBDs, CBDs, it's just CBDs. Now there are different ones like some of them you can get where they'll say sleepy or. Um, up of doing, and that's because they add different um, terpenes in there. But um, the brand, if you're looking for the brand, I like Canna Hemp. Um, and if you're in Las Vegas, you can order from Canna Hemp directly from their website. It's just cannahemp.com, and they will deliver um, in in the mail for free anywhere in Las Vegas. But you get it like within like two days in the mail. Um, and you can order their CBD. That we order their lotions, and uh, but you can also order their tinctures. The tinctures is what they're called for the. They're like droplets of CBDs. Those are amazing. We did those for it's seven like hours. the first two years after I was kind of getting over my bulimia, and I needed it. And but it gets very expensive because it's like I think it's like between sixty to a hundred dollars depending on uh, what you get for the the tincture. So it can get expensive because we were doing it on top of the flour because I was that sick. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, you know, if you're doing bulimia or you know someone, 
for many years, you can think that you're fine. I did it for 15 years, and I thought, oh, this, I'll never stop. But it is a very, very deadly disease in the sense of what it just does to your body over time. And I almost died. Um, that's why I finally stopped. And so it's not a good idea, even if it's working for you. The longer you do it, the longer it takes to recover. So just remember that if you're like, oh, I, I'm feeling fine. I'm like 20 years old, whatever. Because I started in high school and then I didn't stop till I was, what am I now? 35, so 32. 32 years old, I stopped. And that was rough. Um, <laughs> if you're in your 20s, stop now because it does not get better and it, it gets worse and it gets harder to recover. Um, and we did it all by organics. Um, Jedi Rich was also bulimic, but he wasn't as severe as me, but he was also bulimic. That was one of the things that brought us together in the beginning because I was a bulimic alcoholic, um, and I liked to cook, so we would party together, and we would eat and party, and we, <laughs> we just lived like this crazy life when we first got together, and that was what attracted us to each other big time so now it's so funny because now we're like such health nuts that people can't imagine like if you knew us before you would know we were like ate so unhealthy we didn't anything but coffee addicts i drink so much coffee i used to make like 10 pots of coffee a day if we were home and i'd go to starbucks and stuff we even drank coffee when we lived in a cave for three and a half months we made coffee the whole time <laughs> like we would carry up water just to make our coffee which is so stupid because coffee dehydrates you. So it's a really bad idea if you're living up in a cave. We had to hike up like a mile to get to where we lived. It's not a good idea when you're up in elevation <laughs> to be drinking something that's going to be that dehydrating you. But anyways, Jedi Rich walked away and I'm kind of just rambling. Um, so this is probably like gone on way too long. I don't know how long this scope is. He usually comes and stops it. <laughs> so I'm just talking, but... Um, I don't, I don't know. I, he turns it around because the thing is with Periscope is it's so distracting when, because you want to like answer everyone's questions, but there's just too many questions that come in. And sometimes people are saying nasty stuff, but I heard that actually now they, that you're able to vote. So we're, I'm kind of new back to Periscope. We did it, like I said, many years ago. I said you walked away and I'm kind of just rambling now. How long is this? Oh, we're just doing great, man. Whatever you okay, well, uh, talk about. Uh, Oh, I can keep talking forever. I just didn't know if I was oh interesting God. people anymore. I'm sure you are. Yeah, because I, I was talking about how we were drinking all that coffee when we lived in the cave yes. and stuff. And I was saying about how unhealthy when we first met. I was saying about bulimia a little bit. So I was encouraging people, if they're bulimic, to try to stop. Also, right now is a good time to really adjust your diet. Since you're home and it's hard right now, I know it's so hard if you're eating sugar and people go, oh, I'm not eating sugar. If, pretty much if you're eating anything but organics, then you're eating a lot more sugar than you think because they put sugar in everything. Um, one time I got a um, an artificial sweetener. It was a stevia droplet thing and one of the ingredients was sugar. I'm like, this was... <laughs> This was when I thought artificial sugar was good for you, which none of it's good. But I thought, how could artificial sugar have sugar as an ingredient? I was like, this is ridiculous, but you really got to watch. They add sugar to everything. And like I said, your brain thinks anything artificial is sugar anyways. But that's on a whole other topic. But what I'm saying is right now is the time to start considering cutting back on things like caffeine. I know people go, what? Go back. I did a blog all about it. Caffeine is not going to make you lose weight. That's the biggest thing you should realize. And long term is going to make you gain a lot of weight. That's People drink coffee we have a lot of times to lose more weight. Days of lockdown. Yeah. Why don't you guys use this as a time to cleanse? Right. So I would recommend cutting back That's on your a, caffeine a challenge. and and uh, trying to cut it out, but it's very difficult to cut out. So cut back. And then, because um, right now you don't have to go to work, some people. Because see, cutting out of caffeine, you're going to immediately feel tired. So if you had to go to work, it's a bad idea. But since you're home, sleep. What? And you go, oh, I don't want to sleep. If you're at home and you're struggling with overeating and you're drinking a, a bunch of coffee, start sleeping instead. It would be better for you than taking coffee or eating right now like cut out your caffeine and just rest that would be really good because people fear resting because they think they're going to get fat if your alternative is to drink a bunch of caffeine or to then be snacking all day 
just sleep for a while. Sleep for a long time and let your body have that rest that you never normally get when you work regular jobs. Sleep for eight hours in the middle of the day. Sleep for 12 hours. I mean, you might have kids, you might have some things you have to take care of, but I mean, if you have this time where you can just sleep, sleep, but you'll say, I can't sleep. Cut out your coffee and you'll sleep. I guarantee that's what I'm saying. Try to cut back on your caffeine and you'll be like, I'm so tired, all I wanna do is sleep. Take this opportunity to do that. It's the best thing you can do to heal your body, especially if you've been going, going, going for so many years. Cut out the caffeine and sleep. Um, and then let your body heal because what happened is you gave yourself artificial energy, all this, like you tricked your brain. Um, and all that caffeine does, I did a whole, a whole scope so you can go back, but I'll just give a quick thing cause people don't realize is it, um, suppresses your senses. So it doesn't really make you not tired and it doesn't really make you not hungry it makes you feel less tired and less hungry because your senses are dulled but it dulls all of your senses so you don't want to be doing something that's dulling your senses all day long because that's why you continually need more coffee because you're more tired because you dulled all of your senses that's why first you feel a little boost because it dulled your senses so you didn't realize so it'll do it'll dull so you don't feel pain you don't feel tired you don't feel like all of these things but then you also don't feel emotions so that's why people start to get angry and depressed and they get like real riled up on caffeine because they're not really feeling their real emotions so everything's like like, it's just like you're in a different altered state. You really are. Caffeine is a drug. We haven't really wanted to accept that as society. We think it's not. Caffeine is totally a drug. It's so addictive. And we are so addicted as a society. So take this time to cut back on your caffeine and definitely your alcohol. And if you're like, oh, I, I was the biggest alcoholic. I thought I'd drink for the rest of my life. Like, I thought I would quit and then start again because I just loved alcohol so much. But as soon as I switched to weed, I have no desire for alcohol. And I thought I would never feel that because I was like a big time alcoholic. Like, I was like a, where I would sneak it all the time. Like, if Jedi Rich left, he'd come back and he'd be like, what happened to the bottle? I'd be like, I don't know. He'd be like this much left and I would act like I didn't drink any if it was like a whole bottle before he left Because when we were in Panama, I was drinking a liter and a half of um, rum a day by myself I was like a full-blown alcoholic and um, I, I got I, it, I got one time like so sick because um, I had to drink every day I had to drink when I woke up, but there were times that I'd get so sick from the alcohol but only the alcohol would make me feel better but the alcohol would make me throw up so that's when you get that horrible alcohol poisoning where you need alcohol but when you drink the alcohol it makes you vomit that's a good point you know they just they just started lee's online ordering and it was so crazy around here that it got shut down the lee's online ordering got yeah, shut down because the alcoholics were going nuts to right get... they ordered so much oh just couldn't handle volume that's insane. Yeah, it's and uh, you know I'm I'm speaking for I had a DUI. I mean I've had it all, and I'm saying try weed if you're in any state that it's legal, and if you're in a state that is not legal, I I recommend moving as soon as you can once this is over because you need to be in a state where it's legal because it's so important and it's so beneficial. And I was not a weed, uh, 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 you know, um, connoisseur at all when I was younger. My sister was a pot smoker and I honestly didn't like it at all. I tried it a couple times, but I always tried it when I drank, which is when most people try it. And what happens is they go, oh my gosh, the weed got me so messed up. No, what happens is the weed made you aware that you were drunk. Because what happens when you're drunk is you're um, intoxicated and your uh, senses are dulled, same like with the caffeine. So you don't know that you are drunk. Now, if you take weed with alcohol, then the weed lets you know you're drunk. So what happens is you realize you're stumbling around, you realize you're wasted, you realize, which you normally would have had no idea because you'd be like blackout. So I remember this one time I took, this is uh, when I was a big alcoholic, I met some guys at a bar and they had some Rice Krispie treats and they gave me a little piece of a rice, like the tiniest piece of a Rice Krispie treat. And I remember I staggered, I luckily, you know, was walking, I wasn't driving or anything, I was walking home and I staggered all the way home and I still remember this and I remember thinking, whoa, I won't do weed again. I got so messed up. And then it dawned on me that all the weed did was let me know how I walked home every night from the bar. <laughs> because, but I was usually so unaware because I would black out. I wouldn't know how I got home. I would just stumble home. And then um, I'd be like in a bed, like, how'd I get here? But that time I remembered the whole 
journey home. And then I go, oh, whoa. And then that made me actually kind of scared of alcohol for a little bit. I mean, I still drink after that. But it gave me a new kind of thought about alcohol. Because when if you ever experience that awareness of how you are on alcohol, it can be scary. Um, and I'm telling you, try weed. And you'll be like, it'll heal so many things. It'll heal. Oh, this is the other thing. People think that weed gives you the munchies. It's like, oh, I'm not going to do it. The only time weed gives you the munchies is when you're not eating right. So what it's going to do is going to tell you you're not eating right. So you think you're hungry. But what you are is hungry for real nutritional food. But you're not going to know that. So you're going to grab the macaroni and cheese and all these other things. But it's only because you think that's what you want. But what your brain is actually telling you is that you're hungry for real food. So you need to grab something healthy, like real food, like real meat, not artificial meat. We eat real organic beef or real organic some kind of meat or just real meat. If you don't have organic, real meat, not artificial stuff. Give yourself real food, like food from the earth as in fruits and vegetables and meat. This whole vegan thing, God go out the window. So I had a client yesterday that he says, how do you stay so thin? They ask me this all the time. I say, I eat organics. He says, so you're a vegan? I said, absolutely the opposite. And he says, but you said you eat all organics as a vegan. I said, no. Organics does not mean you're a vegan. I didn't say it like this to him, but I, you know, I don't really argue. I just said, no, no, that's, but I get this all the time. Vegan does not mean organics. It is not even the same thing at all. Now, you can be a vegan and eat all organics, but they are not at all the same thing. Vegan means you don't eat animal products at all or use them animal products. You don't consume or use animal products would be the extreme vegan. Organics mean food from the earth that is not tampered with, meaning no GMOs, no steroids, no pesticides, no... Um, hormones, food from the earth. That's organic. That has nothing to do with being a vegan. Nothing to do with vegan. And we have this conception and that is wrong because when I say organics, do not think vegan or vegetarian. I am saying eat meat, eat animals, eat real animals. Now you say, oh, but the animals, that's so awful. I don't want to eat animals. That's eating the dead. You have to eat death. For one thing, plants are alive. So get out of that. You are not eating something living when you're eating plants. Plants are living creatures. So you are always eating something that is living when you consume. Even if it's made in a lab, it is now a living organism. So you are always consuming something living, and now it will be dying when you consume it. That is what we live on, and you gain knowledge by eating living things. You gain their knowledge, and they're okay with that. Now, we don't want animal cruelty. That is what we don't want. So there's ways that you can, as a society, avoid that by choosing to buy things like organics, cage-free, cruelty-free, humane um, treatment. You can look for these things, GMO-free, uh, no uh, hormones, no antibiotics, and you can start looking. They'll say these on the labels. When you choose cage-free, uh, pasture-raised, grass-fed, all of these options will help in the treatment of animals because if you don't choose the ones where they're treating the animals bad, then they're going to be forced to have to treat the animals better by everyone choosing the humane options. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they will go with what the masses want. If we as a society allow them to continue to treat the animals wrong by choosing all of the cheap options because we're being cheap. Now, I understand right now it's tough, so it might not be the time to just, you might have to buy the cheap option. But what I'm saying is in the future, when you go, why is that more expensive? That's because the animals are treated better is why it's more expensive. Okay. So. Great. Okay. Um, we don't want everybody, there's not enough organics in the world. So we're not promoting organics anymore. Well, I'm going to say what uh, I feel. Okay, ask it. All right. right now, there's not enough organics in the world because they don't choose organics as the option right now. They choose what the mass is. So if more people wanted organics, then we would have to have There'd be more. another food shortage again. Well, 
but that would be more the reality. Then we would realize that because right now we live in this artificial thing that all of this food is good for us. And that's why we have all of these people that are obese and overweight. And most people are, and if you're not obese, most people are just more than they want to be. You know, most people want to lose weight. That's a common thing. Most people say, if you ask them, do you want to lose weight? They'll say yes. Most people are not at their ideal weight. That's because we've chose all of these things as, as, supplements for organics and organic is just the way food used to be but then we said oh when there probably was because of food shortage i know i think they maybe was one back in the 70s and they said let's start making other food options but those options have now caused a lot of diseases and harm on people and and i'm not just saying being overweight i'm saying being overweight also leads to a bunch of diseases and problems and stuff so yeah i know everyone can't eat or